And when you were making it, you obviously knew it was something special there, but you, you, I don't think anybody was expecting it to go on to take over the world the way it did. Like, I mean, the US chat shows, they were mad about it. And it made Paul and Daisy, like, huge international stars. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I think if I'd been asked what, did I, what would I think was going to happen, because the show's quite low-key, really, you know, in terms of style, it's very kind of naturalistic and television is very noisy you know yeah. like streaming television the stuff is very and it's lots of amazing stuff but it's very high concept and you know very star driven and all that and so i thought we would have a dedicated band of sort of chin scratching cinephiles who were going to love the show and then like very quickly it was amazing even the first weekend i just remember I remember getting all this stuff and thinking, do you know what, I'm just going to chill out and do something. And I switched on some Brexit, uh, Brexit podcast. Yeah. And it was, you know, the, the Normal Bre People episode. <laughs> the Brexit something. cast, yeah. They yeah, were talking they about were talking Normal, normal people. people. I thought, well, this is just bizarre. Yeah, it, it was, was absolutely bizarre. So then, <laughs> because, of course, then you're like, well, we're obviously going to do Sally's other book, Conversations with Friends, which I thought was, I preferred to Normal People. And I'm just wondering... Did that, must have, did that bring more pressure or are you still at ease going, I know these characters? I mean, I think there's always pressure on anything because um, I, I think maybe it's true that there's added pressure when you've had a, a, like a proper yeah. hit with something and you're doing something which is so related to it. But once you get stuck into it, you just get caught up in the, you know, in the doing of this particular one. And it, it's, I think of them as kind of cousins rather than siblings, you know what I mean? Okay. They're, they're, they're similar in lots of ways. It's still Sally's kind of unique take on character yeah. and her ability to kind of get inside people's heads but it's also it's it's sort of gnarlier this one i mean this what well, this it's more of a coming of age story uh, than a than a straightforward love story yeah. and you've got four characters kind of quartet of characters who are all very uh, interesting in their own way. So the relationships are messy and and you're not quite sure who to root for at various points and i think that adds a lot but it also means that you're not comparing something so similar with normal people. It's yeah. quite exactly, different. it's yeah. different. And I mean, the casting with Paul and Daisy was so spot on for normal people, then the pressure then. And, but you took a real chance with Alison. Yeah, I mean, sh sh she's amazing. And it's, there's, there's, like for me, one of the great, one of the lovely parts of, of the work we all do is just when you find somebody that hasn't had that attention and you know that they're kind of extraordinary and you have that lovely feeling of, of kind of bringing them to an audience. So with Alison, so with, you know, we've got very experienced people in the cast. We've got mm. Jemima Kirk, people would know from Girls and Sex Education. We've got Joe Alwyn of The Favourite and we've got um, uh, Sasha Lane, who's, you know, American Honey and absolutely amazing actress. Yeah. But then Alison was, I think, still in the Lear or just graduated from the Lear wow. when we cast her. And she, the, she carries the show and she is, you know, like, I think, you know, her life will change a lot when this comes out. Wow. That, see, to, see, to kind of know Star that someone's maker. life can change like that and tr try to warn them about what it yeah. can become. Because we know what happened with Paul and Daisy. They were yeah. followed everywhere. Yeah. And there was a moment, and I know, I, like, I live in Dublin, but I'm pretty sure, like, you couldn't move for seeing Joe Alwyn filming on the street. Like, yes. he did it amongst people. Oh, like, yeah. we'd see ye. Like, I'd be walking down Wicklow Street going, there's Lenny, he's, he's, shooting, <laughs> he's shooting the show yeah. again. We did it, like, we were out, and one of the hardest things about shooting on the street at the moment, obviously, was, particularly back then, was masks. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. you know, because we don't close the whole, like, we, we try and, the way we work is we try and work, like, keep it as close to real as possible. And, yeah, Joe was out and about, and Alison was out and about, yeah. and it totally unrecognised. And <laughs> I don't know how much longer that will happen, yeah. you know? I remember when when uh, when Paul and Daisy sort of blew up, and um, I met Paul somewhere, and I was with my kids, and all these people started running over, and cars started pulling up. We were in a small town in Kerry, and people were just getting out to take photographs. And my daughter, who's really wants to be an actress, was like, her mouth was like wide open, and and she was horrified because somebody gave me the camera and said, "Can you take a picture of oh, me and Paul?" Oh, and, and, and Nell was like, "But that he did the directing." Excuse so I don't me. know why you don't want a picture the of him. The artistry of this. Because it was <laughs> crazy. Like during lockdown, if Paul went down in London, the pair of O'Neill shorts. There was there was like was front mobs. of papers. It was <laughs> uh, no, it was mad, and he was just living in a flat in London. You should be getting commission on all that stuff. I'm just going to say, Lenny. <laughs>